There is a lot of useless advice out there that just doesn't work. However, this does. Get ahead of your opposition. It really does work, so give it a try by checking out the link in the description below. The question, what makes a brilliant cover letter? Answer by Stephen Q. Shannon. You are all well served here with a robust array of answers. May I respectfully add some other thoughts for your consideration? Do all possible to make sure your target employer wants to see a cover letter or e-letter. Fortune magazine in late 2014 pronounced the cover letter dead on arrival at most major employers. Cover letters cannot be scanned by resume scanning software. Who sends resumes in the mail anymore? Since the 1920s cover letters or equivalent have been composed by job seekers who failed to get professional assistance. As a result cover letters gained a terrible reputation to this day. Larger, name brand firms do not pay people to read glittering generalities contained in most cover letters. Medium-sized firms may tolerate cover letters for a few seconds, and then toss them. Entrepreneurs, startups, and small firms are more interested in seeing you and talking with you than reading pieces of paper about you. The truth is that no matter how brilliant your cover letter and resume might be, there is a big problem, FaceTime. If it is true that the average time spent with your resume, first time through, forget cover letter, is 6.5 seconds, what are the chances that brilliance will ensure you will get a call back, fast? Company Magazine some years ago, still valid today, wrote and published, pursuing a career is not about finding a job, it's all about building a network. Most working and employable candidates claim they have four or five non-family members in their network. Not true. It's more like an anemic 25. If you have 25, you need 50. If you have 50, you need 100. What you do not see in the credible answers here is the importance of learning how professional recruiters network their hind ends off to cause employers to pay them to find the candidate they are looking for. For starters, if you are willing to oh job search like you mean it, pull an all-nighter and read Skip Freeman's book Headhunter Hiring Secrets, the original version, available used in good condition for peanuts from your favorite online bookseller, plus $3.99 shipping via media mail. As profane artist slash writer, QMC, Lao says, if you want to stand out in the crowd, appear brilliant, avoid the crowd. That means avoid the hundreds of job boards being aggregated as we speak by a firm that promises their employer C. Lions, no emails, no documents to print, no phone calls, no attachments, meaning no cover letters, none of that. As the spokesperson on the radio ad says, hiring is the worst part of my job. Imagine being considered by that person. Finally, don't go it alone. Especially if this is your first serious job search or you are over 50 and haven't looked for a job in a long time. It's vicious out there. The competition for employer scarce attention is brutal. Other seasoned resources with whom I am not financially affiliated include Ask the Headhunter, Nick Corkadilos, The Insider's Edge on Job Search and Hiring, TM, HTTP, slash slash www, Mario Elizabeth Bredrod, Common Career Thought Leaders, Home. Answer by Kelly Wilkins. A cover letter is a written document that is sent along with your resume that talks about additional information regarding your skills and experience. If you want to be considered for a position, then it is essential to write an application letter. This letter provides a detailed explanation as to why you are qualified for the job you are applying for. Additionally, it a also highlights past achievements and puts out a request for a personal meeting with the potential employer. If you're able to present an effective cover letter, it could increase your chances of being considered even though you have a weak resume. Basically, a cover letter could make the difference in obtaining a job interview or having your resume put in the back burner. Check out this page for some great writing tips in putting together your cover letter. How to write a cover letter for a resume. Here are some simple tips for writing cover letters to get you started. One thing to know about cover letters is that it should not be a copy and paste of your resume. Instead it should expand your resume, explaining the facts written there and written in your own way. The things that should be included in a cover letter are, the position you're applying for, reasons for your qualification, skills you have that you can offer, and gratitude for being considered for the job. There are five basic yet essential elements to a cover letter which are greeting, opening, hook, skills and closing. In these elements, you'll need to effectively introduce yourself your achievements and your skills that you can offer to the employer. Other than things to include in your letter, there are also things not to include. After you've written your cover letter, check it for typos and factual errors. Additionally, it would be better to not use I too much. 
It's also best not to mention your other job applications you filed for other companies for it discourages employers to consider you. Answer by the Execute Search Group. Just like resumes, not all cover letters are created equal. There are those that thoroughly impress a hiring manager and those that get tossed to the side with the rest. No candidate wants their application to fall in the latter pile, but unfortunately, cover letters are just as vulnerable to the black hole as resumes are if they aren't engaging and well written. First and foremost, there are a certain number of things every cover letter needs to address. What position you're applying for, what skills, experience, and competencies you have to offer, why you'd be a great fit for that particular position and the company in general, to demonstrate that you've done research on the company. A thank you for the employer's time and consideration. In addition, be sure to include your name and contact information in the header. However, your contact information is the only part of your cover letter that should replicate your resume. It's perfectly okay, and encouraged, to expand upon something listed on your resume, such as certain skills and experience, but don't use up your valuable cover letter space to simply restate what your resume already says. A cover letter should be kept to one page, so utilize that space wisely to include what may not fit on your limited CV. For example, if the position you're applying for requires experience with Excel's pivot tables function and you happen to have that, you'd likely list advanced Excel skills, including proficiency with pivot tables in your resume skills section. So, when writing your cover letter, why repeat yourself when you can expand upon it? Try writing something like during my time with Compan, YX. I worked on a number of projects in Excel that required heavy usage of pivot tables. Going on to briefly explain one of those projects would be a great way to link up different items on your resume, show credibility, and show that you truly know how to utilize that tool. Unfortunately, some rely on their resumes to get interviews, and employers are on their guard for that. If you're having a hard time figuring out what to write, try asking yourself these questions. What does the employer need from the person in this position? How do I fulfill the employer's needs? How would I fit into this company's culture? What past work or academic experiences best prepared me for this role? What do I offer differently from anyone else applying for this position? Finally, make sure your writing style is appropriate for your industry. Are you a creative professional? Then feel free to take a more creative approach and tone. Are you in financial services? It may be best to stick with formal, professional writing. Approaching your writing with the most appropriate tone and angle will show you know your industry well. 